previous video, we factored out the common header and footer into their own separate files. Now we're going to take a look at how to use variables and functions to create dynamic information inside of those files. Now we saw how to use include to factor out the header and footer of our pages so we don't have to write them into every single one of our content pages. Now in our actual site, we actually may need to change certain parts of our header and footer. And the way we have it set up now is an identical header and footer section will be displayed on each page. But for instance, let's say our page title. On each page, we want the title to reflect the actual page that we're on. But since the title tag is in our header.php file, we need a way to place our pages information into the generic header.php file. Well, we can do that using variables. Now let's look at our index.php page. Now we're going to go ahead and change this to home. Now we want this home to be included in our title, but our title is inside of our header.php file. So we can use a variable and we are going to do it just like this. Now I'm going to split our PHP code section onto multiple lines because I want to do something before I include the page. A variable is a named piece of information that can store a value and be recalled over and over again. I'm just going to show you. Now variable names in PHP start with a dollar sign so you can easily identify them. Then they have a name. In our case, we're going to name this variable title. And now we want to actually give it a value. So on this page, our title should be home. And we're going to do that by creating a string, which we remember is done by placing quotes. And we'll go ahead and say home. And place a semicolon because semicolons come at the end of each line. So what we've said here is our variable named title will hold the value home. Now that's good, but we actually want to use this. So let's use it on this page and replace this hard-coded home with the reference to the title variable. So we're going to take this and we're going to replace this with a PHP code block. And inside of this, we want to take the value out of our title variable and place it into the output content of the page. We do that using what we call echo. And just like include, echo is a special language construct and not a function, so this also does not have parentheses like a function would. So we say echo, and whatever we place after the statement will be placed into our page. So in this case, we're going to place a variable, our title. So when we save it out, and we go to our page, and we go home, we can see that home is printed out here. And just to show you, if we change this string right here, it will change the value out here. Echo is a powerful command that allows us to print contents from a PHP block into the actual output of our page. And notice I left a semicolon off there, and I want to place a semicolon in there because it's a good habit, even though it may not be necessary in this particular case. Now we actually want to place it into the title tag of our header.php file. So we're going to open up our header.php and scroll down to the title tag, which we have here. And let's go ahead and place the same thing. Now we're actually going to use the exact same code. So we're going to do PHP and we're going to say echo and we're going to say title. And let's see if that worked. So we'll flip to the page and refresh. And we can see that our title now displays the same thing as this title right here. Now, how does this work? Well, in index.php, we created a variable called title, and then we included this header.php file. When we include this header.php file, all of the code inside of header.php has access to all the variables and all of the state of the file that included it. Now, if we were to just run header.php without having included it from another page that defined title, this would actually be a blank value and we wouldn't see anything. So this is a powerful way for us to pass information to a more generic page to make something more specific. So you'll see that our title is accessible both from within the exact same source file as well as any source file that is included. So we can do the same thing on our about.php. We are going to want to go ahead and create a title variable of about us. And let's just move that to the next line. And here we can replace this with echo title again. And so if we go to our about page, we see about us is down here and up here. 
Now, you'll notice what we just did is actually have to go and change things on multiple lines. Now, just because we factored a lot of code out by including header.php doesn't mean that there's not things repeated. In fact, this include on both sides of header and footer are repeated code. Now, there are some other patterns we can use to get around this, but at some point there's going to be some repeated code. And that's why you want to make sure to think about these things before you actually implement them. For instance, if I had, you know, a couple dozen .php files, all with include underscore header.php, and I wanted to change the name of header.php to some other file, well, I'd still have to go and change all of those different files. So we want to think about that in advance and try to have as little duplicated code as you can to allow yourself to make changes without having to change a bunch of different source files. We'll look at other ways that we could structure this sort of site that can minimize this type of hassle. Now let's go into our footer.php. Here we see our copyright year of 2010. Let's say below this we wanted to place the current time when the page was loaded. Well, let's create a PHP tag, and we're going to want to echo something, and now we actually want to get the current time. Well, we're going to want to use a function that's included in PHP to do this. The php.net website is invaluable to use while you're using PHP. This has a listing of all of the built-in functions, as well as some great examples on how to use them. Now, I know just from my experience that to get the date or the time or something, I want to use the date function. So I'm just going to type in date into the search, and it's going to take me to the date function page of the php.net website. So here we can see that it's in both PHP 4 and 5. We're using PHP version 5, so we know that's good. And it's going to give us a description and see that it returns a string, and it takes in a format value as well as an optional timestamp. When you see an argument here enclosed in square brackets, that means it's an optional argument that you don't have to pass. Now it'll give you some more information on each of the parameters in this box down here. And this is good because the way date works is it'll print out the current time and date in a special format based on this special string that we pass as an argument. And inside of that string, we use special characters to say whether we want the date or the seconds or the hour or whatever part of the date or time we want in what format. So this table is really invaluable. So let's use their example format here. We're going to copy this, and we'll go back to our code. And we're going to say echo date, and our string format will be this. And let's see what this prints out. So let's go back to our About Us page, and we see it says wed comma, 21st of July, a shortened July, 2010, 17, 21, and 29 seconds. So looking at this, we can see that this is the shortened date, and this is the day, the month, the year, the hour, the minute, and the second. The colons don't have any special value, they're literal values which we saw in the format here. So let me go ahead and just place a line break here so we can see that a little easier. And now, in our copyright, let's say it rolls over to 2011 and we want to update all of our pages. Well, we could do that very easily since it's in the bottom of our footer.php file. We only have to do it once. But let's say we wanted to do it automatically so we don't have to worry about it on January 1st. Well, we can replace this 2010 here and use the date function to print out the current year. So let's create a PHP tag right in line with our code. I'm going to say echo. And we're going to use the date function, and we say date, put our parentheses, and then we have to pass it a format string. So just like we did before, we'll create a string, and I just want to use the year, which is a capital Y. And we can see that in the documentation here, the capital Y is a four-digit date. If we wanted to do a two-digit date like 99 or 03, a lowercase y is what you would use. This table really comes in handy because almost nobody can memorize all of these different formats. So we're just going to put a Y here, save it out, and if we go back to our page and refresh, we can see it's 2010. Now I can't go forward in time to show you what it'll look like in 2011, but trust me, when our system time rolls over the year 2011, this will automatically change to display 2011, just like this string changes to show the current time. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to handle forms in PHP.